Dude, come on, what happened? Just like like Justin. <laughs> right now? What? <laughs> yeah, four hours. <laughs> What's that like? Okay. So we're starting a new chapter. I already have one of those. No, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For you, I would. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> now two boxes are for four euros. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. That's uh, right. Just stay away. <laughs> okay. I don't care. Next chapter. I don't care. Oh, that's the whole point. Yeah, the. What are they called in English? What? Those. Yeah, I don't What are they called in English? Honey, uh, honey, <laughs> <laughs> I, I call them honey pops. Because it's like a lollipop, but it tastes like honey. So I, I call them honey pops. That's their name now, I'm sorry. We must have said it about ten times. <laughs> Enjoy your honey pop. Yeah, sorry, okay. I do not have this level of sensitivity, so I'm just chewing through it now. Anyways, he gave it to me, so I'm like, whatever. Write this down now. Next chapter. Come on, Yahya. So we even think that the Young's Modulus? I think Young's Modulus was the last lesson, wasn't it? I sure hope so. Because it did about the lesson. Well, let me just double check. Yeah, Young's Modulus was the last lesson of the last chapter. Wait, wait. So you <laughs> I'm glad to see you're so happy. <laughs> I think I have to save this for later. It's very sweet. Very sweet. I need like a cup of coffee with it or something. And dip it in the coffee. And dip it in the coffee possibly, yeah. Okay, did you write that down? Yeah. So, chapter 5, or section 5 of the course is fields. And this is the first lesson of it, electric fields. Okay. So, it's not too difficult to start with. And some of the stuff you'll know from chemistry already. Like electric charge is a basic property of electrons, protons, and other subatomic particles. Electrons are negatively charged why protons are positive charge. This is basic chemistry. Um, make notes if you need to. But I'm sure you did this in the first week of chemistry. But maybe it's a more advanced question. I said electron, protons and other subatomic particles. Quarks. Quarks, true. Yes. Do we know any more? Are they are, but hmm, they are, but they don't have a charge. Because I, uh, I'm presenting it. Ah, when's that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh huh. Yeah. Who's your teacher to watch you? It could be anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be there? I don't. What time is that? So. <coughs> I might be there. Well, yeah, no, I might be. Don't you want to know about the oxygen? Yeah, I do actually, so I might be there. Okay, you got that? Okay, continue. Right. Oh, uh, other subatomic particles? No, just the quarks? Um, the anti quarks and. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And this is also something you know from chemistry too. Things are negatively charged and things are positive charged pull on each other. Uh, so this is what makes the electron and the proton stick together in the atom. The electron you know. I mean we haven't talked about atoms yet, but you know from chemistry, electron goes around the proton. And the reason the electron sticks to the proton like this is because of the opposite charge. Mm -hmm. And this is how we form atoms and things like this. Things that have the same charge? Repel. 
Uh, and this is called the law of charges. But again, this is basic chemistry knowledge. Uh, so you can write something, even if it's just the name of this law, to help remember it. Got that? Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, electrons stick to protons because they're oppositely charged in the atom. Um, what is a helium atom made of from chemistry? Yeah, how many? One. That's a hydrogen atom. Yeah, hydrogen. A proton. Two. Two. Yeah. How? Two protons stuck together with, it and with two electrons going around it. Right? So my question is, if the protons have the same charge, then how do they stick together? Because of the forces that are pushing them. Yeah, but what forces? Up from the electron electric mm. field. Interesting, but no. Good attempt. Interesting, but no, not this. <coughs> no? Because um that would only work if yeah, yeah, that would only kind of... No, that's a fair enough answer, but I feel like you would need more electrons than protons in order to keep them pushed together. But when it's balanced two and two, there's no reasons for the electrons to win. You know what I mean? Now, good answer, though, but not this. Anyone else know? Ah, you'll discover in the next chapter. Oh... <laughs> But it's worth thinking about. Why can protons stick together if they're not supposed to? That's something we'll look at later. Okay, so now on to what is new today. Uh, an electric field. So an electric field is a vector field. Now what's a vector field? So I'll need to explain that on the side here before I continue with the definition. So here's the simplest example I can give you of a vector field. Uh, we imagine that there's a wind blowing from the north. And the strength of the wind is represented by the magnitude of the vector, which is represented by the length of the vector. So if the wind is blowing quite strongly, then we draw the vectors uh, long like this. So if you stand here, you feel the wind pushing south. And likewise here. If you stand here, then you'll feel it pushing south. Now let's imagine I put a wall here. So what will happen? Well, these will bend around the wall, won't it? It's wind then just not just no, it's not. Ah, true, but I, I think, I think there's some kind of friction effect at the edge of the wall that will cause yeah. it to curve back in. It's not going to be like uh, a hallway. Um, so if you're here, you'll feel less wind and in a different direction. In other words, what the force of the wind is doing. You can represent it on a picture by drawing all these arrows, which represent the force, the direction, and the strength of all the different points. So this is an example of a vector field. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, because you know the word field? So a vector field is like a garden of vectors uh, everywhere. So the vectors here, they don't really have any length because there's no force there. So that's a vector field. So an electric field is a vector field, focus, that shows the direction that a very small positive charge would move when placed in the field. So just again, before you write this down, for example, here is your proton, sorry, here is your electron. Well, it doesn't have to be an electron. We'll say it's a few electrons, maybe. 
And here is your proton. Or whatever. Um, which way will the proton move? To the left. So there's a force to the left. So we can represent that by these arrows. Will the force be bigger or smaller if I place the proton out here? What do you think? So the arrows should be smaller. And then they get bigger as they approach. So the key here is a vector field shows the direction that a very small positive charge will move. So whatever way a positive charge would move, that's the direction of the field. Um, a common enough exam question, well, no, I'd say maybe 20% of exams have this definition, vector field. <laughs> well, the curtains are like the vector field because they're pointing in the direction of the force. And the bigger the force, the more stretched out they are. What do you mean the wind? The force, the wind. The the force, which so like, oh, is, it, is it going out the force? Well, right in that moment it was. Mm. Uh, possibly there's a breeze coming in from under the door that's <coughs> going out that way. Because the outside the wind, uh, the speed of the like in here yeah so the pressure the pressure so it, it air is going out the the force mm. is this way yeah mm. like if i put this here it'll accelerate mm. that way right mm. not not that way mm. yeah uh, with the vector field it's the force that you care about where the force is pointing okay continue yeah right so um I, I, I'll do more of these later, but here's an example of a field around a positive and a negative charge. Now, before you draw it, and they do quite commonly ask you, or frequently ask you to draw this in the exam, just think about how it makes sense. If I put a small positive charge here, it will want to move away. So that's why it's pointing this way. Okay. If I put a small positive charge here, it will want to move towards the negative. If I put a positive charge here, it will want to move towards it as well. If I put a positive charge here, it will move to the left because the negative is here, and it will be pushed to the left because the positive is here. Yeah, so if you think about it, it makes sense, the picture here. Um, in the exam, they'll ask you to draw this, uh, and there's four different versions they ask you to draw and this is just one of them and this is just a basic one to get started with it's what does the field look like when you have a positive and a negative charge together like this okay so if you can try and carefully draw this example of an electric field please got this no i don't see any pictures i wrote electric field and the always from positive to negative. That is true. I need more honey pop. Okay, that's enough. I can't have too much. Yeah. What pictures? You went all the way to get a notebook. You only use that much. Is that a record? No. Let's see your picture, Lee. Is the reason for why the proton fits together the neutron? No. Not really. 
Because all the electrons are around and push them. That's what he said, and I explained that that's wrong. What? No, I said neutrons. No, no, no and I said electrons. Electron. Because if you had a positively charged helium atom with no electrons, how are they still sticking together? Like a helium plus two has no electrons, because it's positively charged. So how are the two protons sticking together if there's no electrons pushing them together? But then what if, like, I was thinking the neutron would act like a medium, like that? Might, but do you always have to have a neutron? Can't you have just two heliums with no yeah. neutrons? I don't... You yes. Yeah. Neutrons can be changed? Yeah, that's what, um, isotopes... Oh, yeah, but then can the isotopes be zero? Yeah. I think so. Okay, you drew that? Yeah. Beautiful. Where's Wong? Does anyone know? Who knows? Okay, continue. So, <laughs> how do we measure charge? In chemistry, how do you measure charge? Well, you don't really, do you? No, we measure oxidation number. Yeah, but I mean, how would you say... We don't measure, we calculate. Okay, hold on. Hey, I see the fasting has done nothing to uh, <laughs> hamper your uh, participation in class. Um, fasting didn't make me any slower. <laughs> <laughs> Add it to the list of t-shirt expressions. Yeah, okay. Um, what did they say? Oh yeah, in chemistry, for example, how do you say how much charge an atom, an, an isotope has, or, or an atom has, or whatever? How do you say this is positive charge? Well, you would just say... You call it an ion. An ion, sorry. Yeah, how would you say <laughs> the charge of an ion? You can feel the number of electrons and No, no, you're making it difficult, yeah? That's like plus one, plus two, yeah? So the way you measure charge in chemistry is just by measuring or counting how many electrons you have or don't have compared to the protons. So a plus one charge means what? You have one you have one, more less electron. Electron. one less electron. One more proton or one less electron then. But this is not how we measure it in physics. We have a unit to measure the charge and it's called Coulomb. And it's an SI unit uh, for electric charge. And the definition of the Coulomb um, is actually kind of a simple definition in physics. We say one Coulomb no, not that simple. One coulomb is one coulomb. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Uh, no, one coulomb of charge is the charge transported by a current of one amp for one second. Because remember, amps charge per second. So one coulomb is one amp for one second. That's how much a coulomb is of charge. This is a, a common definition for the exam as well. I'd say about 30% of exams maybe have this definition. It's easy enough definition. So the definition is on the... It's the whole thing here. Yeah. No. <coughs> what do you think the part of plasma, plasma can be interesting? Part of what? Plasma. Plasma can be very interesting. Are you doing plasma? Yeah. Good. Are you finished? Not yet. 
How I'm much asking. have you done? Like, I've done the topic about uh, neon light. I want to talk about fire and the north and the light. North and light is good. Yeah, that's good. Yes, that's good. You can talk about that. That's very advanced Bose Einstein conversation. It's very hard to explain because it's very advanced. Bose Bose Einstein conversation, which happens around about yeah. absolute zero. Yeah. Can I talk about black hole? You can. Yes. What's your topic? I might change. Oh, you you do know that you're supposed to do it tomorrow. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Last minute changes aren't always a good idea. Uh, okay. So, for the proton, the charge when measured in coulombs is. 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. You'll need to know this number. I doubt you've seen this in chemistry, but you might have seen it before. Yes? Uh, I think in chemistry, the only thing you do with the proton is its mass, or do you even do that? Is this given to us? Yes. I wanted, but I thought the reading of Upton the cost was like it's not it's n nothing proven, it's just a theory, I think. Well, the experiment is just a talk experiment, yeah. it's not a real experiment, but that's fine to talk about. Well, what is your overall topic? I'm kind of linking light to quantum physics, like to see how light, uh, like you know, like solar seal and the uh, uh, good, so and all that. Yeah, yeah. So good. Uh, That's good, you should do that. Search about the photoelectric effect. Yeah. Uh, that's boring. No, like no, that's boring. Yeah. Solar yeah. sails are cool. Yeah. Don't solar sails. Solar sails and, uh, and quantum cryptography. Quantum cryptography is yeah. cool. Go with that. <laughs> Screw the photoelectric <laughs> effect. That's so 100 years ago. Alright. Uh, charge of the electron. You will not be surprised to know it's the same as the proton, but just with a minus. Makes sense, obviously. But I thought the electron was bigger, so it should have like a bigger charge. No. Bigger in what way? So electron size and then bigger in charge. No, no, you're mixing them up. Protons bigger in mass. Electrons are the smallest of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Electrons have no volume. Zero volume. They're only like they are two D. They're one D. Yeah, they're only points. They actually have. They have no radius. There's no shell. It's just a point. So the proton will be much bigger than this. But the point is the radius. Huh? No, no, no. The electron has no radius. You can check it out. It's quite confusing. It has zero radius. The radius is zero. It's a point. So then this makes you think. Well, then how does it have a mass? if it doesn't have a radius, because then it doesn't have a density. Yeah. All things to think about. Right. And the neutron? It's charge? Zero. No, zero. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Now, as a note, uh, mass of the proton you might need for this lesson as well. Did you do this in chemistry? Uh, oh, I forget this one, or 27. Are you using grams or kilograms? Or what? <coughs> no. Mm. Grams. Give it to me in kilograms. Twenty-three. 
Dun, dun, dun. So that's the master from Tarn. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, okay. Because it's yeah, my bad. Uh Master the electron, does anyone know? You might know this from chemistry, possibly. Roughly, how much smaller in mass is the electron compared to the proton? Does anyone have a rough number from chemistry? Is it the minus 29? No, no, like how, how many times smaller is the electron compared to the proton? Um, two times. Oh no, much more than that. The a, thousand? a thousand times. The electron is about a thousand times smaller than the, about a thousand times smaller than the proton. And the neutron, how does the neutron compare to these two, do you know? One? Yeah, yeah. Effectively, when you're doing two decimal places, it is the same as the proton. Although technically there is a small difference in mass between the two. But that's more in the next chapter. Right, you got that? Ah, uh, 9-11. Bomb. <laughs> Dude, some cultural, cultural Western sensitivity here. You don't see me making explosive jokes about your home country. Do you, <laughs> find so? Do your home country. <laughs> All right, you got that? Yes, yes, okay. Uh, right, now, please note often uh, this number here is represented as just E because it's a common constant. Uh, and it's actually on your calculator as a constant, E. And this E is what you would call plus one in chemistry. Yep. Like the charge, plus one charge, yeah. Uh, right. Now, different parts of the field would be stronger or weaker than other parts. So earlier, here, uh, where's my wind picture gone? In the picture I had earlier with the... There. Lee, are you up to trouble? Your head says no, but everything else says yes. Okay. Um. Goodness, that's your chance, wasn't it? As I was saying, have a look at your picture of wind. If you drew it earlier, or have a look at the picture of the electric field you drew earlier, different parts of the field would be stronger and different parts would be weaker. So, for example, would it be a stronger or weaker field when the positive charge is near the negative charge? be stronger. And here in the picture <coughs> here, it's stronger here than it is, say, like here. So different parts have different strength. They have a different amount of force. So we need some way to measure this. And we call this um, electric field strength, how strong the field is. So what is electric field strength, the definition of it? Uh, obviously the name suggests it's how strong the field is, but how do we define it exactly? We say the electric field strength, E, is defined as the force per unit charge. In other words, as a formula, the strength is the force experience divided by the charge. So it's a force per charge term, a newton per coulomb.
So has the gym during Ramadan? This is the third day since I came back, so I didn't go yet, but hopefully it is. Continue? Mm-hmm. So is it extra protein shakes in the morning then? Mm, not tomorrow. morning. What's the strategy? Mm-hmm. Most students I find small mm-hmm. breakfast and then totally pig out at midnight. Mm-hmm. Pizza, fries, milkshakes. And not the breakfast. What's not? The morning? Yeah. No, it's a... Uh, it's not the morning. morning. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 2.50 before 2.50. 2.50 a.m. That's not a morning, that's the yeah. middle of the night. Yeah. yeah. And so you're picking out at midnight then? Yes. And for a thought uh, But no, I think I think gym is best to go before a thought, which is like when you're oh. ten. Like the yeah. then you go oh. back, you have you start eating pizza, curly fries, yeah. chocolate. Not that. If you want to do it gym. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work extra hard at the gym then. Okay, did you write the definition down? Yes? And what's the unit for E? Coulomb. Newton per Coulomb. Newtons per Coulomb. Okay. Uh, so, here is a very... Yes? Question? No. Uh, here's a simple example. You have a current, and the electric field strength around the current is... 10 to the minus 25 newtons per coulomb, and this is when the uh, this is at some distance from the, the wire. What is the force felt <coughs> on a free electron? So if you look at the formula, oops, where's the gun? What's the formula for force then? It'd be electric field strength, yeah, EQ, electric field strength multiplied by Q. Now, do you have the electric field strength here? You do. I gave it to you. And do you have the charge? Yeah. You do. So please multiply the two and tell me what the force is. What's for the charge? It's an electron. One point six something. Ten to the minus twenty four? Forty four, that's better, forty four. Okay, did you all get that? Yes. E is on your calculator, I think it's constant twenty seven. Anyway, so we'll go to the next one. So the next one here. Uh, an electron is placed uh, a distance from three protons. The three protons produce an electric field. The electric field strength is 1.41 times 10 to the minus 24 newtons per coulomb. What is the acceleration of the electron? Now this one's only a little bit different. So think about this. Um, can you get the force here like last time? Yes. And if you have the force, how can you get the acceleration? By knowing the mass, and do you know the mass of the electron? Yes. You do, because I gave it to you earlier. So uh, I'll just write down what you have here, and then you can calculate it. So you have E equals F over Q, and F equals MA. So that means that E equals MA over Q. So A is EQ over M. So if you multiply the electric field strength with the charge, and then divide by the mass, you have the acceleration. So if you can hit that in on the calculator, please, and tell me what you get here. Uh, the electron charge is constant. Electron charge. Yeah. Uh, something like 23 or 27 or something. 23. Did you make a mess? What did he do? Did he have a little accident? He drove it. Rude. Are you getting a bit Stephen Hawkins over there? I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, that, that was totally insensitive. <laughs> if Stephen, Stephen Hawkins, if you're watching this video, and I know you are, <laughs> so sorry about that. 
Uh, right, continue. He's still alive. He's yeah. still alive. Yeah. Oh, hard! Oh, oh man! <laughs> Trust me, his dad would make the newest. You would hear about it. Yeah. Okay, did you get an answer here? No, they can just go like, ah, we told you 10 years ago you died. But guess what, we died now. It was actually more than 10 years ago. He was told when he was 20, he'd live yeah, for like yeah, 5 more years. Did you watch the movie? No, I didn't. didn't okay, watch it, yeah. It's a good movie? Yeah, I, I watched it. that. Okay, uh, did you get an answer here? 2.48 times 10 to the minus 13. Uh, new, uh, meters per second squared. And you did it by using the formula I wrote a moment ago. Okay. So now it's getting a little bit harder. And I'll need to do these ones now because they're getting a little bit tricky. But we only have one class today. Uh, we should have two classes. But the reason there's only one class is because I have a test I'm doing in a few minutes. No, it's for the. I have to do five tests, and this is the one that's the most boring. Data networks. For what? Uh, so boring. Uh, just a computer diploma. Mm. Is it uh, <coughs> on the computer? No. Oh, theory? Yeah. So it's all like. Oh, that's bad. I know network topologies and. What are the advantages what and disadvantages? Oh, no, 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 I'm not that easy. <laughs> it's like, what is the advantage of a it's twisted a pair cable over a fiber optic cable? Yeah. Like, oh, so boring. <laughs> Tree network. Tree network, star network, yeah. ring network, bus network. So boring. <laughs> Circle the server. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a diagram. Circle the server. That's what I did. Yeah, a bit more than just circle the server. <laughs> and, and like that. for the biggest confusion. <laughs> Probably the server. <laughs> and the Any, Anyway, it's a three hour exam. The but the I reckon I can do it in an hour. hour. <laughs> so what? The three hours and yeah, oh yeah, you're talking about scary, did you? Yeah. yeah. You took it from the plane? Huh? Yeah. Nice, yeah. you can send me that too. So, what we'll do is, in the next bit of class, um, we'll continue... <laughs> Not chat. <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> next physics class, we'll finish these examples, they get a bit more difficult, and then I think we might work on the tutorial questions together. So I still have, I think, two more difficult examples to do, and then the questions at the end. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. See you later, Ali. Later. Wow. Yeah. You like nine or something? <laughs> Eight and a half. Big boy now.